Dave here. How are you? Today is the 13th of December 2020, getting closer to Santa all the time. I hope you've had a good week and today I've got a fair bit in the show and I'm going to be doing some things that may not be conventional, but I just found that they work for me. Now, also I'm trying to tame things down a little bit so if you don't have all the slick gear, if you've got hand tools, well, I'm going to show you how to be able to put this solid timber onto the edge of a piece of well, in this case it's going to be melamine but it could be a laminex top on a kitchen bench or or some plywood i'm going to show you a way that it's going to be easier now i will be using the domino but you could use dowels or you could use a biscuit jointer and that's about all now i've grabbed the run sheet let me see what we're doing i've just talked about what we're going to do there i've got a competition this week as well to win one of these now this is basically a, uh, a guide for a bandsaw, but you can use it also on a table saw. Links in the description below, the video description down below, uh, open up, say show more, and you'll find the link to the competition for this. It's for Australia and New Zealand only, I'm sorry. Uh, but this has been uh, sponsored by Carbotech, this particular thing. So if you follow the links, go into the running for it. I'm gonna demonstrate this as well on the show. But we need to get in pretty quickly. Also, I'm going to cut a plastic insert for cutlery on the table saw using the sled to go into Vicky's quilting uh, table thingo. <laughs> okay. Morning, Brian. Morning, David. Morning, Mark. Morning, Robin. And hello, everyone else. Uh, Vicky's. Well, hello, baby. How are you? <laughs> now that we have the NBN. We can actually do this. I can run the show. Vicky can watch up in the house, which is great. Okay, and now also please send in the images of projects, not Provex, what the hell? Projects you are doing for others to enjoy. Send it in to my email, which is down the bottom, and away we go. Morning, John. Very sorry to hear that. John Larry, what's happening there? Uh, keeping busy the key. Oh, oh, yeah, that's no good. Uh, ben, how are you? All right. First thing we're going to do is get this done and glued and then towards the end of the show I'll take it out of the clamps and I'll show you how easy it is to do all this stuff. Um, you've been looking at getting one of those Michael. Excellent. I'll move the keyboard out of the way over here. Hopefully don't turn the show off while I do it. <laughs> That'd be embarrassing. Um, all right, let me think, let me think. I've got to slow down for a second. Now the first thing I'm going to do is on this board it's going to send all the color crazy on the uh, video. Um, I'm going to put some masking tape along here. Now it's going to do two things. Ordinarily, I would use painter's blue tape, but I'll show you why I'm going to use masking tape instead. I've got to find the end and hopefully it all works well for me. I hope all of my props behave behave themselves today. Uh, I have done a little bit of practice with some of this stuff, but you never can tell on the day whether it's all going to work well. I want it as close to the edge as possible. One of the hard things with using masking tape on a white surface is it's very hard. There's no contrast between the two. You're good, are you, Ben? Excellent. I saw you had some uh, interesting people trying to join your group on Facebook. And uh, one of them left a lovely task there for you to do. <laughs> what a rude person. There we go. So I will be showing you, after I've done the glue up on this, what I've done for... Uh, Vicky's bench. So there we go. I have the tape on. Not that you can see it. Now it's going to do a couple of things for me. First thing is I'm going to put this piece of board and I'll probably go to Carl Cam for this part. It's been a while since we've used Carl Cam. There we go. So that's easy enough to see. All right. So this piece of 
this is rock maple, Canadian rock maple. I was going to use Jarrah, but I, I just thought it'd be nice and light colors to do it with this way. First thing we're going to do is get a pencil and a combination square. There you go. You're sticking with me so far. Excellent. Next time I'm going to write A and A, but very lightly on the timber. Don't write heavily on, on the wood that you're going to sand. Then it's quite simply going to be lines across, and I'm not going to move the board at all. Go to the center, put a line there, and to the middle. Now this could be the marking for you to use a domino or a biscuit jointer or dowling, however you want to do it. Whatever you have available is, is fine. You may not see those. So you should be able to see it now. See, I've got the, the pencil lines there. They're not extremely heavy. Next thing I'm going to bring this forward. And I'll put a couple of clamps in there to hold it steady. While I put the domino through everything. One. And a clamp from the other side. I'm going to back that off a little bit. Got to remember which direction is tight and which one is less on this. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, good. All right, I ain't going anywhere. I may even switch to this camera beside me so we can see what's happening. Um, there we go. And I'll get, I might just go to camera three on its own for this part. There we go. So I have my marks. I have my reference point down here, which says A. You can see on this one that I've written A on there. Basically, when I turn this around, I don't get confused when I try and upside down or, or whatever. It's marked, so I know where I'm at. Quickly get the domino. Now I'm using the 700, and I've got the um, dock plate on as well from Seneca, because this is exactly 10 millimeters thick. It's allowing me to use the RTS 500, which is an adapter that lets me use all of the domino cutters from the, the uh, 500 on the 700, which may not mean anything to a lot of people, but it's good because it, it, you know, it lets me go down to four millimeter cutters instead of just um, you know, starting at eight. I'm going to pop it on here, looking down over the top and pushing down hard on this part here. Here we go. A bit of a noise, so you may want to turn the sound down a little. Now, wait for this to turn off. I've got the five millimeter cutter in there and I've set it to 15 millimeter plunge because these are the dominoes that I'm going to use. Now, basically, for people that don't know what these are, these are a non-rotating dowel. That's all it is. They're made out of beech, and they go in there absolutely beautifully. So it's got, that'll go in 15 millimeters. I'm going to put receiving holes or mortises in that to go over it, and I'll make those ones a little wider. Okay, so this has been set at eight millimeters deep, because this is 16 millimeters. So on the Big fellow, I've set it, I don't know if you can see here, I've set it to 18, 18 millimeters. The reason being, I've got the 10 millimeter plate there. I couldn't get down to eight millimeters without this. All right, now I'm gonna run along and do these other four holes or mortises. So again, you might wanna turn the sound down just a touch. Okay, they're all done. Now remember we've got this point here, that's eight, or sorry, A, and it's gonna line up. So I'm gonna rotate it this direction, and I'm gonna clamp it to this board. It makes it easy. 
It'd make it easy if I had some clamps here, David. <laughs> Give me a second. I'll just grab a couple. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, the pie warmer. <laughs> yeah, I got a very, uh, very talented girl. Now I'm locking it on either end. So I'm going to do one, two, three to start. Again, the noise. Now before I do this, you might see just here there's a little slot and there's a lever on the side here. When I click this, that way, it goes to the second position. That second position there makes the, the dominoes drill or cutter swing further. So it's going to be it's going to be the same thickness, but it's going to be a little bit uh, wider, a little bit sloppier left to right. Now, the other thing is, this is very important. When you're doing this kind of stuff and working with skinny boards, I have dressed some more boards down to the same thickness. And I'm going to put them there to rest the Domino's uh, work table on. You get it? So I'm going to line up with the hole, or with the mark there, and I can push down, and this means that the domino is going to go in perfectly flat. It's not going to roll down, or it's not going to tip up, if I haven't got good control of it here. So here we go. Now, got all those done. It's just a matter of shift this off and move it down to here. And I'm going to put a domino hole there. Is, are we still streaming or not? Because I can't see any comments happening on the side there, apart from Vicky did the pie warmer base go. How did it go? Put a comment in. Let me see if we're still still on air, or whether I'm just talking to myself here. Okay, there we go. Ready? That one. As I said, these are a sloppy hole in width. They move like that, but it's still the same thickness up and down. Move this one. Streaming. Good. Okay, <laughs> you must be interested in what I'm doing then. Because ordinarily, you guys are yabbering away on the side. What would be a good track saw to get just starting out in woodwork? Um, all good, okay. Well, look, I, I have a Festor one. It's not because it was given to me. It wasn't given to me. I bought it. Uh, I like it. The Triton one apparently is good. And the, the, I can only comment on what I have. So I can't really tell you. Other guys in the, in the ch uh, chat will tell you what they've got. I know that Hilton's got um, uh, a Bosch. I know that Jeremy's probably got a DeWalt, seeing he works for that company. And I know that uh, a couple of other people have got uh, a Grizzly, an Aldi style thing. You know, the blade is the main thing. Let me keep working here. Okay, I've got all that done. You're absorbed in what I'm doing. That's good. Did you see the post I put on Facebook yesterday? This shaving here, I'll get it for you. This one is half a thousandth of an inch thick. Now that is five ten thousandths of an inch. How cool is that? I've got to win a prize of some sort for that, haven't I? Okay, take this off, move that out of the way. This one as well, <clears throat> part of me. And take all of these off. And now, they're all lining up. See that? Beautiful. All right. Now, Joseph, just used my Makita with two five amp packs. Work great, clean with suction hose. 
I've I've got six amp batteries in in my guy here. Oh, sorry, tell a lie. I've got a six point two and a five in mine. Six point two down here and a five up there. Five point two. This thing works beautifully. I much prefer this to the other one. And I'm glad I just heard that little sound because I haven't put the post on Facebook. On not on Facebook on the um, the other one that I do. Um, where is it? Here we go. That one. You'll probably get, if you're on Facebook, you'll get another post right now. There we go. How did Cole's show go this morning? I hope everyone's watching what he does. Um, Bessie click clamps. That's what these ones are. And Cole uses them on his jig. And I use them a lot in here. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, this is where we think, oh, be careful here, David. All right. I'm going to move that down to there, and I'm going to get some baking paper. And this is only one of the, I'm going to use the baking paper for a few things today. Now, I've had people rouse on me for doing glue ups on my bench without using baking paper underneath it. Tip that back over there. Don't go too far. Move that back over to there. I think if I put that about there, it should be good. Fingers crossed. All right, now I'm going to bring this back here and I'm going to be out of sight a little bit because I'm going to put the dominoes in this first. Well, I don't have to be out of sight. I can stay in full sight by simply using the front of the bench. So we might switch cameras again. Like so. And in from this side. Just to make it easy. Beautiful. All right, we're going to do some gluing and put the, just uncover the name on the bench. Oh, no, I can't do that. Um, all right, now, some glue. I'm going to use this one because it goes off pretty quickly. They say, I'm not sponsored by them. Um, they say 30 minutes in the clamps, which I will. But I'm not going to put a truckload of glue on. That's one of the problems people have is they put too much glue on a job and then the squeeze out is unbelievable. That might do me. Got these guys here. And brush. Spread it around so it's going to go basically where I want it to go. I could have put uh, masking tape on this side as well, but there's a reason I'm not going to. As a matter of fact, I want to peel that back. I don't want any masking tape on this side. Are you curious? Are you curious as to why I'm doing this? You know, I've done it a few different ways and I just came up with this idea this morning, and I think it's a cracker. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil it. You'll have to wait, see, see what I do. I possibly have a little bit too much glue on there. Now it's down the holes. We don't need to worry about it down the holes too much. The reason being that the dominoes are only going in for mechanical strength. They don't really do much. It, the glue is the thing doing all the work. That's all there is to it. Push that in. Next one. Next one. Next one. As I want to try and get this done so I can get it out of the clamps as well before the end of the show and keep working on it because I've got other stuff I want to do with it. Now, I'm not going to put any other stuff there. Now, remember, I've got the A written there. And I've got A on that side. Let's go to the front camera so you can see what's happening. Going to line it up. And you notice I haven't put any glue in here. Maybe I should. Maybe I'll just put a little bit on here instead. And again, it doesn't need a lot. Get a little bit of a run there.
<laughs> oh dear. Now I've been slack. I haven't posted out last week's prize yet, the uh, my parallel guides, but I will be doing it this week. So uh, the person who won was very excited, and I don't blame them. What a great prize! Okay, that's going to do me. Let's slide it on, making sure. Oh, look at that. See, it's lucky I label things around the other way. I look at it from this side so I know what's going on. There. Ta-da! Now that's not the finish. <laughs> All right. What I'm going to do next is is part of the part of the trick. Here we go. I'm going to take it out of here and slide it up. You can see I've already done one on the other side. Put it over here and put it about there. There and there and there is lovely. More to come. Put the clamps in up there, I think. I'll tighten this up a little. So it can't go anywhere. Got him. And this one. Like so. Now that's pretty tight. Now, see these guys here? These are John's camp clamps. Let's go to Carl Camp for this one. This is one of the reasons I love this bench. Now I'm not, I could have used my Bessies, the big Bessie clamps across here, but I'm trying to show the versatility of this bench, how easy it is to use and how many different functions it's got. Tighten that up. Now I don't need to put a heap of pressure on there, maybe a little bit more there. Uh, it was touching that. That's looking pretty good. Now, one of the other things I could do if I wanted to, and I possibly will, is I might, rather than try and force these too much, I'm still going to utilize these, but what I'll do is I'll release those just a touch. I've got a few minutes to work with the glue, and I'm going to drop these guys in Move that out, move this along until it gets to there and drop one in and pull it back and one on the other side, hopefully it'll go in, should do, can't see why not, like that, put that back in the position I wanted it, which is there and these have got a little bit more clamping pressure this way. Down you go. Release, pull that across. That's good. And that one. And then this one can slide in. And this one. And these are basically holding it down in the position I want it. Come back towards me just a touch. That's it. Ah, that's better. Pulling up beautifully. And no slipping. Yes, I am at work tomorrow. <laughs> baby, baby, baby. I am at work tomorrow. Now, what's happened here is just back that off a touch. That's all sitting really well. Go to this one. 
I'm going to back these off now. They don't need to be pulling down. That's just lovely. Um, <clears throat> what's happening now is the masking tape has stopped anything from me writing on the actual board. Not that it's hard to get rid of, but it's a little thing that, that uh, it's just one less thing to worry about. But the main reason the masking tape was there was to pack the domino up a couple of thousandths of an inch. Now why? Why did I do that? The reason being, I packed it up on the melamine, but I didn't pack it up on the timber, which now means that the timber, which is, was where I machined it down to being about a half a millimetre thicker than the board is, the melamine, I am now slightly proud of the bench, oh, sorry, of that unit on both sides rather than on one side. Uh, able to replace getting the 500. Uh, <clears throat> Anthony, the RTS 500 is an adapter that goes onto the 700 and will take all the 500 uh, uh, cutters. So four, five, six, eight, and 10 millimeter, which only have a certain depth. It's the week after baby that I'm not going to be there. So let me think. The, that plate is, um, is 10 millimeters thick. And when you connect it to the bottom of the 700 dominoes work table, which is what that folding part is, it all of a sudden allows me to use all of the other stuff uh, because the thickness of the, this domino, I can talk about it because I've, I've got a couple of minutes. Without this, the lowest it can go to is 10 millimeters. So half of, I normally try and center a domino like the actual dowel, I try and center it in a board. So this being 16, the ideal position is eight millimeters. Going down 10, I'm, I'm running the risk if I was to use a six millimetre uh, domino itself, I would only have, will you work it out, half of six is three and 10 is 13 millimetres to the edge on one side. So I'd only have around three millimetres. I'm starting to get a bit thin there. So coming back gives me, when I'm using a five millimetre cutter, I have five millimetres of domino five and a half millimetres, I, sorry, if at, at 18, oh sorry, at, at eight, yeah, I, let me think about that, eight minus two and a half, yeah, I'm, I'm right, I'm, I was second guessing myself, five and a half millimetres above and below the domino itself, okay? So that, it really does make it easy I didn't, this is a much heavier machine, and I bought this because I thought I was going to need it, but I didn't. You know, I used it for a couple of big projects, like the big swing set that I built, and I will use it again further down the track, but the 500 probably would have been the better buy because it's lighter, uh, it's cheaper, <laughs> that's one thing. Look at this, this is great. Again, with these, you don't need massive pressure when you're gluing stuff together. Hardwoods, they say, yeah, you really do need to punch up the pressure. But this is not a, this this is not an Australian hardwood. This is a Canadian hardwood, which is equivalent to a, you know a, an Australian softwood. Uh, wish you were scripted now. Not really, not really. It's the the whole thing with this show is that it's keeping it real. It's it it there is no uh, safe haven with editing. All right. The next thing I wanted to talk about was, let's go over to the table saw and I'll run the sled through. I'll move this out of the way and bring that camera over there. Give me a second, I'm just gonna move this. Calculator, that's the one. Um, I could have used a calculator, baby, but I just, you know, you know, you know me, I like living on the edge. <laughs> um, and I have taped all of my cables up today, so this camera is not, going to disconnect itself. Now, I know John will be in the background saying, oh, Dave, you should be using a, um, making up yourself uh, a pivoting gimbal kind of camera support. And I will one day, I will, I will, I will. 
you like my swing set. Okay, let me have a look at the other camera. That's not too bad. So we're going to go over there and I'll see you over there in a second. So everyone can see that, can't they? I might tilt that up just a little and around. <clears throat> now I've put the Perspex cutting blade in. It's a it's got a negative rake on it. It's got a negative rake of three degrees, which is really good for plastics. It's not going to grab hold of it. I'm, that's up too high at the moment. I've just put the blade in. I've put the riving knife on. I'm going to lower this down. And put the insert, not that it really needs it at the moment, because I will be uh, using the sled, which is going to cover the spot for the insert. Now, for people that haven't seen my sled, this one is very, very safe. The reason I say that, I should have really put some T-Track in it to hold stuff down, but this one is really safe. The reason being, this is what I'm going to cut, is I can't, I can't push it any further than that, which means the blade can't come on this side and surprise me or my fingers. Okay, this is top dead center of the blade at that point. What I've done is I've put a couple of strips of timber in my miter slots out the back behind it. Now, cutting plastic, I don't want the blade to be too high. I want it to kind of, the, the trick with a blade is to have the gullet, the bottom of the gullet, uh, at the same height as the top of the material you're cutting. So. Let me come back a little bit and you'll see that, maybe. That's where it's going to be anyway. Now, this side is already cut. I need to cut the other side. And I said, this is the, uh, the insert that's going to go in some of the drawers for Vicky's uh, quilting station. I'll turn the dust extractor on. So it's sucking down through here. Not a good idea to put your hand there while the blade's turning. Just a simple thing. I'm going to put my eye muffs on. Because <clears throat> cutting plastic, little chips can fly up. So it's not a bad idea. Bringing it across, I'm going to take around 14 millimeters off. All good. My blade doesn't have a brake on it, so I always wait for it to stop. It'd be nice if it had a brake. But you'll see that's a pretty clean cut. So hopefully it's the right width now. Now I need to cut it to the length. I'm going to check first, so I might switch the cameras over again as well. Making sure that's all still nice and tight, which it is. I'm loving it. Okay. Um, wobbly camera gig you need, something like that. New project for the show, how to make a jib arm for your camera. I should do that, Dave. I've been told that that's one thing that I should be doing. Uh, pretty impressed that you can click a button and go to another camera. Uh, Peter is fine and called many names over the years. <laughs> Uh, cutting plastics can be more hazardous than timber. Correct, correct. I'm going to go and check it in the drawer here to start for the width. So that's sitting in just bloody beautifully, as a matter of fact. Now I need to take off about three millimeters off the side. I'm going to do that right away. And then I'll show you how it looks, and then we'll go on to the bandsaw. All right.
I hope it cut better than it sounded. How much wider is the slot in the middle setting on the DF500? Um, uh, I don't, th th let me think about that one. Now I'm going to remove the sled and switch this other camera on. The reason, the reason I used the sled that time is I really don't like, if I've got something wide that I'm putting over the table saw wider than it is this way, there's a lot of opportunity for this to happen and, and for it to grab. Now I'm going to rip it so it's fairly long in comparison to its width, so I'm very comfortable not using the sled to do this part. Okay. Oh, thanks, Stephen. So I'm going to switch over the cameras again. And I'll be using the rip fence instead this time. Yeah, uh, plastics with the table saw, you've really got to have your wits about you while you're doing it. Now I'm going to lower it down even more, the reason being I don't have the sled's thickness there anymore. And I've got the riving knife in, so if it does grab, it's going to push against that. It's not going to be an issue for me. Keeping it down there like that is the best thing to do. I'm going to lock that height. And then the width, I set about three millimetres narrower. I guess I should measure it, shouldn't I? But I'm not going to because I'm slack. And always this way. Always. Don't be tempted to cut it that way up because this wobble ha will happen and it'll be a problem. It's not going to be supported well enough and you'll get to, uh, cracking and chipping and breaking all over the place. It must be supported. So I'm really only going to be taking some stuff off the side. Alright, I'm not using the dust hood because I want to have a lot of control here as I'm going over. But as so, this is this is going to save me. And as I say, it's one of those things you just need to be very cautious with. Turn the dusty on. Bit of noise again. Hold it down, there and there. Don't be tempted. This might seem like a really stupid thing to say, but don't be tempted to dust things away from the blade before it stops spinning. I know of so many people that have you know, done a, a horrible mischief to themselves by doing that because this just becomes invisible. Sometimes it's also hypnotic. A friend of mine has just hurt himself badly with his thumb on a router table. He doesn't even remember touching the cutter, but it went straight through his knuckle on his thumb. You know, it's just, you have to give these things respect. All right, where are we off to now? But that's, that's a really nice cut. So we'll take off the, uh, the plastic cover. Whoop, got a little zap. And there we go. That doesn't look too bad, does it? All right. I'm not going to leave the table saw like that. I'm going to drop it down because that's more dangerous than having it up at full height. All right. I'm going to bring the camera down here now. How are we doing for time? We're doing very, very well. I'm going to switch the camera over to the other one. Do a quick read. Uh, Wayne, of course you will. Uh, where did you find the plastic tray would be good for a project coming up? Trademaster. 
Buddy, I, Vicky and I love trade. I took Vicky down to Trade Master and let her wander around in the uh, kitchen area. Probably a bad mistake. <laughs> um, I always use a strip of wood above the plastic. A catch can happen when you least expect it. It happened to me. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm going to grab the other camera and move it down here. I think we're doing well for time. I think so. <sighs> it's so good having the, uh, the knowledge that the cameras, the leads, aren't going to separate. I'm going to buy another one of these, I think. Because then everyone can see what's going on. Let's see how that one looks. Not too bad. There we go. Uh, Peter, shut up. <laughs> all right. So these are the drawers. And I've, you can see now I've got all the handles in them. They've come up really well. Uh, they're absolutely beautiful. So there's seven drawers there. And these were just a couple of sheets of melamine only a couple of weeks ago. You know, the only thing I bought apart from the melamine was the handles and the, the runners and the screws. Because remember, this is all pocket hole screw construction. But you can't see anything. Nothing on the sides. Nothing at all. Okay, the insert. Let's see how it looks, baby. That doesn't look too bad, does it? Ho oh, oh. ho! So all sorts of different types of uh, thread that you can use in the, the new uh, quilting sewing machine she's bought. And doesn't she love that? It's basically a CNC, but for sewing. Um, scissors, and what have you. I may put, I don't know, I might put a little bit of something underneath to stop it. But no, that, that looks pretty good. There we go. What do you think of that? All right. Carl, how did you go, buddy? Did you have a good show? Let me come back to this camera. I've forgotten everyone. Um, I've been told to treat saws like a hand grenade when the pin pulled out. That's exactly right. Um, 3D printed keepers are ready to post up. Oh, thanks, Derek. Thank you. Derek's making me a couple of clamps to go onto the thing. Um, love Pacheo. What is that? I don't, I don't understand loud. Uh, it's Stephen Larkin. I'm on Long Island, right? Nice looking cabinet. The insert is perfect. Oh yeah. Isn't that great? All right. Now we're going to go over to use this guy. Now the thing is, <laughs> um, this, these things will go, this is a, a, a kind of an elliptical cam as you, you tighten it up and it locks it into your miter slot. It comes with uh, two other smaller ones that'll go to 15 millimeters, 5 eighths and 3 quarter inch miter slots. So it works with, with a heap of them, which I think is a great idea. Uh, I'll switch cameras again. Well, I'll move that one first over to the bandsaw so you can see what's going on. And if I aim it to about there, that should be okay. I'm going to, sh I did a little rip this morning and I'm going to do another one, but it, you, you might be really impressed with it. I hope so. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's not bad. All right, here we go. Now, this thing has got, it says here, feed direction. There's an arrow on it. This is a silicon that flexes all over the place, then it stops kickback. So it pushes in and pulls back. This here is a clamp that locks it onto there. So first thing we do is we put that in the miter slot up just in front of the blade's teeth. Don't put it behind because you're going to start squashing the blade and that'll give you a bad result. We slide it in. And then 
push that little handle and that's locked it in position. I can't, can't pull back out. How cool is that? Let me see, I've got a piece of wood here. Okay, I'm gonna cut a piece of cedar up. This is, look at the figure on that. Isn't it beautiful? So I'm gonna rip this down the center because I wanna make a nice box out of it eventually. And I need to turn the dust extraction on and open that port, that one's open. Give me a sec. Just making sure the overhead section is working. It is. And some muffs again. What have I got? I'll just I'll throw these ones on this time. All right. I'm going to quickly check that I've got the right width there and that the guy's in the right place. See, that I've got a gap here. So what I do is I release this handle, push it in until it's touching, push forward on it a little, and see that grabbing it? <laughs> How good is that? That stops the kickback. But it's not going to be enough. It grabs it straight away. Also, if this, if this was a rounded log, you follow? If this was rounded, this would take the form of the round. That's the thing that sold it to me. As soon as I saw that, I thought, I got a lot of applications that I could use this for. All my other uh, feather boards are designed really to hold something that's parallel, not free form like this. If you want one, and you're in Australia or New, or New Zealand, go down to the description the video description, end of the competition. It runs for about four or five days. Here we go. That's sucking there. See how we go. get to there I'm going to go to the other side and pull it through relying on this to hold it against the fence you wait till you see it when I pull it out I'm going to go up to the other camera and it comes out like that. How cool is that? What did you think of that? Take those off. Now, remember that, that figured area there? See that? Isn't it beautiful? Now this is book matched. Watch. Down to there and down to there. It's got dust on it. Maybe I shouldn't have done that on the project I'm working on. But look at that, isn't it beautiful? How nice is that? I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. So if you want one, you can go buy one. Use the link. Or you can wait and see if you win one. It's a pretty simple question you've got to answer. All right. I'm going to read this. Where are we up to? 10 to. I think we've got time to finish this off. We've moved through things quickly. All right. I'm going to take this off here. And I'm going to show you something else. Take the clamps off. That was easy. Ah. Uh, this. 
whip that off. Just what I wanted. Excellent, that's worked well. All right. Pammy wants a new quilting table. You know what you gotta do, Cole? <laughs> oh dear. All right. Next thing, next thing, next thing. Uh, get that dust off there. Dave Stanton having dust on his bench. What's the story? <laughs> the next thing, the next thing. I'm going to dock it off. I'm going to dock it to length. So that's the side that had the tape on it. So now I'm going to take the tape off and it will take off the glue as well. So they say, they tell me that with this stuff, you can, um, oh, so nice. Uh, the one that I just used. I'm gonna quickly take this off the, uh, the dust. Give me a second. I don't need it on the domino anymore. Smashing things everywhere. All right, that looks a bit cleaner. Now, remember I said at the beginning, the uh, I wanted to keep this up just a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp it again to the bench. Probably I'm going to put some dogs in first and clamp it. So a couple of dog there and a dog there. That's just to stop it rotating. And then a clamp here. Where have I put my Bessies? They're probably the part that I just pushed off the back. And indeed they were. All right. Should we have a drum roll? <laughs> um, now, see this paper I just threw in the ground? I'm going to get that. I'm going to tear a bit off. And I'm going to get my low angle jack that you saw that I was getting a shaving, which was five ten thousandths of an inch. Now what I did, I'm, I'm pretty chuffed with what I've done here. I'm going to wrap this around there. And I'm going to test it. I'm not taking anything off the melamine. If that paper wasn't underneath, the sole at the heel of the plane, I would be cutting into the melamine now, straight away. So, next thing to do is plane. Nearly done. Nearly. Whoops, a little tear there. Spin around. Now you notice that I'm using the plane, the, the sole of the plane on the board. I've only got the blade hanging out over the part that I'm planing. See the shavings popping up? Beautiful.
Now it's doing two things. It's holding it up off this and it's protecting the board because I don't want the, the metal of the plane body rubbing on that. Oh, that's beautiful. They're so small. Come back onto this end. Beautiful. Now this is all done without a router table. That'll do me for the moment on that part. Um, now I'm going to flip her over. Actually, I'm not. You've, you've seen what, I've, what, I, what I can do. So that's all I'm going to do there. But the next step, the next step, we're going to use the Stanton bench. Of course we are. I'm going to put a dog in down there and a dog back over here. This is, on the, this is designed specifically for Festool and Makita. And I'm going to put a couple of dogs down there. Where are they? Here they are. Found them. <laughs> um, okay. And I think if I put one there and one there, now I can pop that out of the way for the moment. I'm going to go slightly over, guys, but I, I want you to see what I'm going to do here. Next thing I'm going to do is get... The dog locks that I made, and I'm going to put them on a forty. See these guys? <laughs> I'm going to put them on the fourteen hundred track. This way around, of course. David, snap out of it, and I'll slide this one in this direction. Whoop! No, that's got to go that way. Of course, I was getting ahead of myself. Goes in there. And the other one, which is over here. This is one straight up fresh off the CNC. I am enjoying it too much. Um, so I'm going to peel off the protective coating from the polycarbonate after it came off the CNC. Where are we? Come on. There we go. How nice do they look? They, oh, a little bit there didn't come. Come on. There we go. Got it. There we go. Nice and clear. And this is going to go in there. Actually, I might go to Carl Cam for this part. Where's the mouse, David? You guys can probably see it and are shouting out, it's just there. This is embarrassing. Well, it's not under there. There, I found it, I found it. <laughs> it was under the end of the track. Um, where are we? Carl Cam again. So, slide this back here, and you can see this is a TSO track connector. So, if I wanted to join two tracks together, these are the things that I'd use. But I've also found another purpose for them, and that is using their 6mm knobs. And they do have 6mm knobs on their... Um... <laughs> uh, on their site. And there's affiliate links in the description box as well. So, there we go. Now, I'm going to slide this down there and tighten that up. And I'm going to slide this one back the other direction, tighten it up. And now they are, it's not going anywhere. But what I can do is, I, as I pick that up, it just slides off. Put it back on and sliding down because it's an arc that it's traveling in. And these are designed as a wedge at the end. Have a look at the video I made. 
and you can see how I've made them. Now, move that out of the way, just there for the moment, and we're going to cut the end off. The part that we just put on, we're going to cut off. And I'll do one to show you what I mean. So as I say, with the Stanton bench, I'm going to slide that up to there. That's held perfectly. Because all the dog holes are perfectly 90 degrees to each other in this regular pattern, I can now slide that back across there. Put the track in. Like so. Pull this back ever so slowly. Push that to there. And I think I might use the other camera for this part because it's, it's a nice part to watch and I'll use it right at the end as well because we're going to clean up the ends all that kind of stuff all right wouldn't you know there it is <laughs> uh, where are I? I do need a shop assistant no I don't I'm fine, fine on my own camera three there we go so this part here, I want to cut off. Uh, well, yeah, it depends on price, so people can make them out of plywood. Now, the track's up. And I'm just going to drop it down without turning it on to make sure I'm not going to cut the melamine. That's fine. And then the dust extraction. And I'm hoping that I'm still Bluetooth together. Let's have a look. Yep, sure am. Now nothing is going to move. The piece is held on by the grip tape on the bench. The track is held by my uh, dog locks, whatever you want to call them. And the, the track itself, the guide rail has got tape underneath it, non-slip non tape. We'll cut this off. Now, there's a little bit of a burn there, but I'm not worried. I'm going to pull this forward ever so slightly. And do another cut to trim that. And then we're going to do some end grain planing. Drop it down to make sure that we're still good. We are. I'm just going to be doing some shaving. Good. All right. Now the last part. This is the part that I like. Comes off easy. See that? Alrighty, 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 alrighty. Grab this. Um, I think maybe kind of time out for that guy there, Peter. And if I use a dog here and a dog grab that one see you later Brian twist this around a little this way and you can see what's going to happen I love this bench down a little bit in and grab it and on the other side Make it grab a bit tighter. Got him. All right, we're going to fix this part. Okay, um, I'm not sure of what you're saying there. I'll spin this around. And I think that'll be close enough. All right. Plane. I'm going to do a little bit of cutting this way. See those? I love this plane.
Now I'm going to work from the other side this direction. And you might all start panicking. Don't panic. Because there is going to be some tear out here, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to rip this, the end off. And it's not going to worry me. So I'm going to put a clamp on here to give it a bit of extra support. Remember, we've only had it out of the glue, out of the clamps, I should say, a very short time. I'm going to bring that up to about there. I could, I could put another piece of timber in that, but this is basically just to stop this being forced off the end. And I'm going, I've got the, the back rested, the, the sole of the plane, the heel of the plane rested against there. And I'm going to start from there and go that direction. And I'm going to skew it. I'm not going to go straight on. I'm going to skew at a slight angle. And you know what? We're there. How good is that? All right. I think we've just about covered everything. You could put a bevel on the end. I could. I could indeed. But there's no real need. See, there's... there's it's fine. It's fine. That's why I cut as much off with the track saw as I could. And that's, it's just, just bloody beautiful. I'm going to show you how nice the end grain is just with that plane. And the plane, this is why I do the videos or the, or the, on the live show, I should say, about how to sharpen a, a blade. And I haven't done anything special. That's just the blade that I sharpened. I think I did it in the uh, Sorby Pro Edge. And it's come up beautifully. Let's have a look at that. It's not bad for end grain, is it? It's come up magic. All right. Grab my sheet. Um, please send projects uh, that you're doing in for others to enjoy. Please do that. It'd be great to, to see all that kind of stuff. Carl, you speak Vietnamese or Thai now, do you? Uh, the, the competition for Australia and New Zealand in the description box down the bottom. Uh, pardon me. We're going to continue on. This is, this, if you're wondering what this is, this is the door to the hopper that I'm making. Now, the reason I'm putting the edge strip on the timber is because I'm going to use piano hinge. And I don't like going to the side of particle board with piano hinges. So I'll be putting the piano hinge into that piece at the bottom. This is just to make it feel nice at the top. So... Vicky's fair hands won't get cut or scratched or anything. How nice is that? Um, okay. And a big thank you to my patrons. I'm going to read their names out. This is in this particular tier. If you want to become a patron, uh, there's links in the description box down the bottom. And it's very, very encouraging. Every time I get a new patron, I, I get quite excited. And if you want to join our after show chat, we run it for around about half an hour. I might only do it for about 20 minutes this afternoon well, or today. But if you go down around about five posts in my Patreon page, you'll see there's a Zoom link there. Just go into that and click on it. You, but you have to be a patron to be able to join. And we all hang around and just talk rubbish. <laughs> now, we talk about what's happening in our part of the world. So, you know, last week it was just myself and a gentleman from Canada. And that was fine. We had a great discussion. Anyway, patrons, Johannes Moa from the Faroe Islands. Look that up. Get, it's a little spot between Iceland, uh, Scotland, and the, the polar, <laughs> the Arctic. Um, John Parra, Vincent Yang, John Lafferty, Peter Woolworth, Brian Del Vecchio, Justin Bailey, Brett Guthrie, Mike Deem, Wayne Cargill, Matthew Raphael, and John Lynch. Thank you so much for, for supporting me. It encourages me to keep on doing this stuff. Um, and also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, that's lovely. Give me a thumbs up as you're going out the door and share the video. All right, let me see if I've got this. Don't forget to do the um, end of the competition. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and I shall see you next week. Bye.